And uh, Matt's been around a little while. He, we're, we're both, he's an ex-green so I'm not. You know, we both just jump out of the bike and some hard stuff. So, uh, they got some cyber well. And that's working for Sheeran up in Augusta, Georgia. And uh, used to be a blue teamer. And he's doing some great things to instruct him. So, uh, that's has some good stuff to share. So, Matt, I'll leave you. Good, buddy. All right, so, I guess I already got introduced. So, I'll just go with that. Uh, <laughs> My name is Matt Donko. I work for Chiron Technology Services. Uh, I'm going to give them 30 seconds of time because they paid for me to come up here. I live in Tampa, so I really appreciate the hell out of them. Um, I applied to work for Chiron because I took one of our classes while I was still in the Army, and it was the best training I've ever had. I was like, hey, so do you guys, you guys hire him? Because I'm getting out of the Army. Uh, they used to be like super, super high standards, and then they hired me, so I can't, like, that was a joke, guys. If we're not going to have fun together, I'll just go home. He's a racer. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was in the Army for 10 years-ish. Uh, I was a blue teamer, enterprise admin. Uh, a lot of people are like, hey, how do I get into security? I was like, go do a real computer job first, and then get into security. That's, that's how I feel about it. Um, because if you just go straight to, let me get my SysP and now I'm going to write policy. You've never been the guy that has to stand in front of a user and say, I'm sorry, your password has to be 64 characters long. You know, you've never been that guy, so you'll just write policies like that. Uh, I, if you know anybody that's like, oh, I want to get into security, I like telling them, go get into computer first. And then once you do computer, then do security. Uh, you'll have a lot of better time. Uh, Cyber Patriot. Oh my goodness, have you guys heard of Cyber Patriot before? It's like the world's best program. Raise your hand if you were like, could have gone to jail when you were 15 years old because of the stuff you did on AOL. Nobody wants to into that? Okay, and so me, definitely. So Cyber Patriot gives us the opportunity to mentor these young kids, right? They're 16 years old. I can teach them about SSH and encryption. The only downside is we don't get to talk about like red teamy stuff with them. Uh, purely defensive, no offense. We're not allowed to talk about that. But the Until point is... The season's over. Say again? After the season's over. After the season's over, exactly. So we're having informal practices now. Uh, I, this is an amazing program. Uh, if you're in school right now and you want something to add to your resume, go volunteer, be a mentor with Cyber Patriot. This is an amazing program. You're giving young people the opportunity to learn about cybersecurity and not go to gym. So, anyway, uh, I've got my hashtag, my hashtag, my Twitter handle on there. Uh, all of my slides, the scripts that we're going to be working with, they're all up on GitHub or someplace like that. Just search hashtag cyber. Uh, I think I'm the only one. Uh, anybody have to do that? Uh, so when I submitted my CFP, I had this idea, right? I was like, okay, so we're going to do a baseline, and I'm going to do snort alerts, so we get alerts, and it's going to be great. Uh, who loves writing snort rules on the weekends? Anybody? No. So in Seattle, I had like one guy that was like, yes, snort, it makes my day. I said, you need a girlfriend, guy. Um, <laughs> no, but, so apparently, sometimes people enjoy it. Um, not me. So I sat down, I was trying to do what I said I was going to talk about, and I started writing snort rules, and I was like, this is not fun, so I'm going to use bro instead. Um, leading up to this, I was like, yeah, I'm the bearded guy. So I used to, do we have some dude with like a wicked awesome beard? Not really. I'm sorry. But so it used to be like this long, and I was my thing. I was like, yes, I have a beard. I shaved, my wife didn't do it. Uh, no cat pictures. Anyway, uh, the overview of the talk, right? Okay. This is the thing. Uh, creating baselines is hard, right? And it's not fun. As far as going out and being like, I use these 50 ports and protocols from this host to this host. It takes a lot of time if you don't have a good way to do it. So my talk is purely, hey, let's do that thing that everybody hates doing, but let's make it easier. So let's do that. Uh, so the problem, right? Why do we do baselines? Oh, I'm a teacher, so I'm gonna ask questions. It would be great to set stuff back to me, by the way. So it's okay, there's only like 30 of us. So why do we do baselines? Why is that a thing? Find the anomaly. Say again? Find the anomaly. Find the anomaly, right? Oh, it's some detecting malicious network activity. Yeah, figure out what's unusual. But you don't know what's unusual until you know what usual is. So we can find malicious activity with snort rules, right? And they look like that. And that. And that. Are we sure that's not just one? That's that's it's actually two. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait, just three. There it is. 
There we are. So apparently, the first time you install Security Onion, you do an update, you will get 21,000 snort rules. It's a lot of fun, right? But if I have snort rules, right, they're going to detect based on what? Their signature, right? If I don't have a signature, can I detect that malicious activity? No. Right? So the thing we're doing now is like, hey, instead of just looking for very, very bad things, I'm just going to look for everything that's not what I want. Right? It takes me a little bit more time. I have to do a little bit more investigation. But I'm guaranteed to find the bad guy if I say anything that's not what I wanted to. I want to take a look at that. Right. So, uh, yeah, fingerprinting every attack is impossible. Not fun to do. Uh, without signatures, we're kind of hosed. So, this was my initial idea. Can you guys see that a little bit? Basically, I was like, let me build a network baseline, get some kind of alerts when it's outside of the baseline and then make a lot of money. Uh, there's a little better idea. So whenever I was trying to figure out how am I going to build my baseline, I had a couple options. Right? I could use NetFlow. Familiar with NetFlow? Yeah. Right? So let me just record source port, destination port, endpoints. That's it. That's all I care about. It's not enough. Right? I want more data than that. So Bro, is everybody familiar with Bro? This is a cool Bro name. Say it. You have to have a cool Bro name. You have to a cool Bro name. Yeah, um, I'm a programmer and a Bro enthusiast. They had so many cool bro jokes in Seattle last week. It was amazing. I bro did <laughs> Bro <-da> yeah. <laughs> bro down. Anyway, so we can gather baseline data with either NetFlow or Bro. I love Bro. Uh, Seth Hall, he's my hero. He just solved my ticket. Uh, I'm trying to get... Uh, I'm trying to get... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is the this is the you guys know how fired I'm going to get when they see this video? Um, no, so I can gather baseline data. I can use NetFlow and just have nothing. Or I can use Bro and get package string. So package string's awesome, right? Who's a big fan of package string? Who has no idea what I'm talking about when I say package string? At least one? Okay, so in your packets, right, there are strings. So if you do an HTTP get request, get slash HTTP 1.0, right? That's a string, text that you can see. So instead of just taking my TC, my NetFlow, which is just my source and destination port. Or on the far other hand, I can do things like record every single bit that goes across the wire. Full packet yeah, full packet capture. Yeah. Okay. Do you have Do you have two petabytes of storage? Because I have a one gig like that. No. <laughs> sorry, I can't store PCAP for that. So I like Bro because it's that nice happy medium. So I can record source and destination port. Hey, I get that with NetFlow. But I can also report, hey, it was a DNS request for this host. I can report it was a GET request for this. I can say, hey, this SSL certificate was actually used. Bro does a lot of amazing things, and that's what I wanted to talk about today, was how much of a man crush I have on set. Uh, so it's kind of hard, right, doing baselining and detecting bad guys. So I was like, well, who else has this problem? How about detecting malicious binaries? It's a very simple problem, or similar problem. Right? Detecting malicious binaries. You guys remember whenever uh, Veil came out and you were like, yes, I can get by all the PSPs now. Yeah. Remember I said you can talk back to me? You're super excited for it. You're like, yes, Veil, I can get by all the PSPs. So initially for detecting malicious binaries, we had just signatures, right? Just this static, I'm looking for this string in the binary, and if it's bad, it'll say, this is netcap in it. And now I know it's bad because it says this is netcap. Uh, but that didn't work, right? Bill came out and we realized, hey, I can just change those two bits in the signature and now I'm good. Now I'm not going to flag on the PSP anymore. Uh, so what did we switch to? Heuristics. Heuristics, right? So once we realized signatures aren't working, let me watch the activity of malware and see how, how it acts. Is it acting good? Is it acting bad? I don't know. But in 2017, we still have malware, right? So did heuristics solve our problem? No. So this is, I'm a super big Microsoft fanboy now, ever since I heard about uh, application whitelisting. So they're like, wait, so I can tell my computers don't run software that the admin didn't authorize. That's, if you install EMET and enable application whitelisting, you're done. You have no job as a security guy anymore. You come in and drink beer. That's it. That's all you do. <laughs> you those two things. EMET and application whitelisting, and you'll be good to go. Uh, so as far as configuring application whitelisting, right, there's, uh, it's kind of hard, right? I thought 
But then, like, when you say, we're going to do it, it's really easy to say. And then you're the guy who has to do it, and you're like, oh my goodness, my life sucks so hard. Uh, but it's, it's pretty simple, right? Basic strategy. Turn on application whitelisting. Done, right? We can do that through group policy. And then say, log everything. So you're going to have a lot of logs. So you've done this before, right? Oh, yeah. So many logs. But we start with an empty whitelist, and we say, hey, look, everything that runs, I want to know about it. Well, what do I have now? I have a list of every binary that's running on my network. Okay, cool. Let me take a look at that list. Guess what? That's my new whitelist. I have a log of things that ran. Let me just say, these are the only thing that's allowed to run. Now that's the only thing that's allowed to run on my network. Anytime. Say again. So nothing changes. Exactly. Nothing changes. So we're good. Now only these things, they're allowed to run. If something tries to run that's not on that list, I get an alert. If I get an alert, okay, let me look at it. Oh, this is the new Microsoft Calculator app. Okay. I is notice that calculator is always running on your Windows uh, 10 boxes. Mine always is. I get maybe super nervous. It's not malware apparently. But anyway, the point of it is you turn on whitelisting. Now you have logs. Use that list of applications to generate your whitelist. And now you're good. There's no way to run bad code on your boxes. So there's. I thought that was it the whole time. Apparently it's not. But so that's basically what we're talking about. Really, really simple. Not hard to do. I wish more people would do it. But they don't. Uh, as far as finding bad guys on the network, right, on the wire, we can do the exact same thing. Let me just create an empty whitelist. Okay, nobody's allowed to talk to anybody. Hey, I want an alert every time somebody talks to someone. Okay, that'll happen. Now let me take that list of alerts and create a wireless, right? So if you're a network engineer and I come to you and I say, hey, these are the only fire, the only holes in the firewall I want, you're going to laugh at me, right? Because we're going to install those rules and then users are going to start complaining because they can't watch Netflix or they can't do what they need to do. It's going to happen. Uh, the reason why I like the way that I'm doing things now is because if I set up not a whitelist, but a whitelist of things that I don't want alerts for. If it goes six months and I have all these rules in place, guess what? I didn't get any alerts. I can actually create firewall rules now. Not only do I want alerts, but now I can actually block it. And I have proof that if my network engineer creates these firewall rules, I'm good. Because for the last six months, we've had no issues. I haven't gotten any alerts. So that's the other really nice thing about this. Uh, so that's cool. How do I do this? How do I get data from my whitelist? It's all the slides, guys. Remember, I'm going to talk to you in your next question. Row, row, right? Monitor the traffic. Uh, how do I create a policy to log traffic? Row scripts. Row scripts. You can read. You love tell. Uh, how do I create logs from new traffic? Row scripts. Row scripts. I don't. You guys see why I love row? Like, uh, it's so awesome. And then Elsa. Has anybody not heard of Elsa? Programmer. This. Does she, does, she, does, she want to, does she want to build a snowman? Like. Is that, is she, so. When I was in the army, we were poor, right? So we didn't have cool tools like Spunk. I think somebody's name was talking about Spunk. And I was like, I wish we had the money for that. Um, but Elsa, so Bro in 30 seconds, we've already talked about it. Actually, just next. Bro is awesome. You need to know that. You can pull package string and do lots of cool things. We're going to do some cool things with Bro. Why does that keep turning off? Before we do cool things with Bro, let's talk about their logs, right? Everybody loves logs. Woo! Logs! Uh, so, in a bro log, it's a tab separated file, and it's got headers at the top. It looks just like that. It can do way more than that now, right? Oh, I'm, so, I'm, I'm such a brony. Like, that's a different thing. Brony, that's not. That's <laughs> too bad. It's different. Bronies are bad. Bro, anyway. So, this is just a screenshot from the log. Do you want to look at that all day? <laughs> no, that's not fun. Even a little bit. Uh, but I have computers, so I can have Elsa do all the work for me. Yay! Uh, as far as configuration goes, so we can put files here. All of our logs are there. I just want to nerd out right now, so you know what? This is going away. So let's talk about this. I've been talking about this whole baselining thing, right? I wrote a script. Uh, oh. So basically, I was like, I want to have baselines, and I want alerts based on my baselines. I want those, those things, things that I want. But I don't want to have to do it manually, and I don't want it to take six weeks. 
right? Have you ever tried to list out, like, do normal people, or is it just a government thing where you have, like, a PPSM document that says, I, my host, my mail server, listens on these 20 ports and talks to these 20 hosts? Is that a real person thing, or is that just a thing that the government made up? Do you guys do that? It's just a government thing. I've never seen that. No normal people do that. So I used to have to do it a lot. And why? I can't. This is going to make me look so awesome. How <laughs> <laughs> should I do There we go. Let's do that. So it was a thing I used to have to do. I had to make this list of every single port and protocol that a host used. And it took a long time. Do you remember Jeremy seeing me like sit there and just stare at uh, NetFlow for like two weeks? You don't remember that? It was not fun whatsoever. Oh my God. So I wrote this bro script, and I would love to show it to you. So I told myself, I was like, I'm going to record a video of this so that I can show it. Uh, and I did not record a video. <laughs> and it's not working like that. That's great. Anyway, the point is... Video or didn't happen. Yeah, video or didn't happen. <laughs> Remember that time I went to Tampa and they recorded me talking about this thing that doesn't work? This is awesome. I'm really sorry, guys. You didn't do the proper sacrifices. I did, I did not. You are correct. I should have done a sacrifice to the demo guys. I'll just go back to my slides while this talks. So, I'm from Augusta. Augusta's awesome. We have security at any conference. Yes, a conference just about doing nerdy blue team stuff. I love it. Uh, Seth Hall was there a couple years ago, and he was talking about Bro, and he, he said this. He said the best way to learn to write Bro scripts is to write Bro scripts. And I was just like, wait, but it doesn't... I don't know how to write a script. How is that? Can he help learn? But, I mean, honestly, I heard him say it, and I was super upset when he said it. But then I started writing them, and I was like, okay. So my first one took me like 18 hours to do, and it was super hard, and all it did was something like this. Print stuff out on the screen, right? But then you do it more and more, and you get better at it, and it works. So the way that Bro works is use these things called events. So every single Bro script that's up and running, when there's a new connection established, right, Bro has an event for that. And so if your script says, on this event, on new connection, do a thing, all the scripts that say, on new connection, do a thing, they'll do a thing. So the thing that I wanted to happen was, every single time a new connection is established, check to see if it's in the baseline. That's a little bit later. Uh, I wanted to pull it up. That's OK. So here, what do we have here? It's Bro script. Uh, event Bro init. So when Bro starts up, makes sense, right? I love Linux because everything is in English. Uh, bro in it, the bro response. Got it. Uh, so at the top, I have a variable in bro. Instead of having a list like we do in Python, we call it a set. It's still just a list. Right? So I have a set of ports, uh, 21, 22, and port 0. That's how we talk about ICMP with bro. But anyway, so we got a list, and what are we doing here? When bro turns on, let me print a string, and then I will count the number of items in my list, print it out. That's cool. Uh, but down at the bottom, this is the part that I really, really like. Event new connection. If the port that I'm using is in my list of ports, tell me about it. That's OK. It's pretty simple, right? How about I throw a bang in there? If the port is not in my list of ports, I want to know about it. Sounds pretty simple. So that's all we're doing. Hopefully, my VM actually turned on. Uh, so that was just my little first let me try, and then I put a lot of work into it, and now it actually works. Uh, the pseudo code for the script, uh, let's load a table. I'm calling it baseline.data. Uh, every single new connection that comes in, check to see if it's in the table. Wouldn't it be great if every time some jerk on a red team tried to connect to your DC using port 445, like he tried to do a net use masquerade, wouldn't it be great if I knew about it? That would be pretty cool. Right? Because domain controllers, we don't share files out on that very often. Right? Minus a couple of things. Right? Yeah, so there's not a whole lot that people should be accessing. Wouldn't it be great if every single time someone does something weird, I got an alert? That's what we're doing with this. Uh, yeah, and then log any nodes. 
if you want to try this, play with the script, create a cool baseline. I really want to do the demo. We'll see if it turns on and it works after this. Uh, it's pretty simple. Like I said, I put it on GitHub. On line 32, I have a list of networks. So whatever network you want to create a baseline for, type that in there. Sound good? Okay. Too easy. Uh, bro stores all of its scripts uh, in that directory right there. Up, sh bro share, bro policy, miss. So that's where I put it. Uh, and then there is a file that tells bro what scripts to start up, <coughs> right, when bro starts up. So that's the location on security. Please, 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 turn on. So I got the login screen to away. Yes. Yay! I'm so happy. Thank you. So romantic. Yeah, this is so <laughs> romantic. That was that was the term from Seattle. <laughs> so let's Okay, so that didn't work, so let's do that. So here's the script. Now I'm excited about it because everything's actually working. Uh, in case you totally forget everything's up in the header. But it's really simple, right? Let me open this file. Oh, it's the one with all my comments in it that make me look like an idiot. Uh, <laughs> so I'm creating a new log type, right? So all of my logs for this will go into the notice log and traffic baseline exception. So what that means is later on when I'm doing queries, I can query just on that one string, and now I have all my logs. Uh, remember I told you line 32? So global protected, that's what I'm doing there. So whatever your submit is, I highly recommend start with like five hosts. Don't apply this to an entire class B. Uh, it was really fun when I was in Seattle because I had a bunch of guys that worked with Azure and AWS and they were like, yeah, so we want to apply this to 10,000 uh, hosts at once. I was like, no, I'm not that cool. Like, <laughs> 1,000 hosts, that's it, guy. Don't, don't do that. But you can if you want to. I don't recommend it. 5 to 10 hosts. Uh, when bro loads, I have some debugging messages in there right now. But basically, every single new connection, check to see if it's in our list of protected hosts. If it is, cool, let's keep checking. If it's not, we're done here. Once that happens, check to see if the destination is on our list of in our baseline. If it's not, but it's in my network that I want to watch, I want to learn about that, right? If you're trying to connect to a new host, I want to know about that. Uh, we're also going to check the port. Is that a port that I expect people to connect to? Right? So the minute the bad guy starts doing port scan, bang, I have an alert now. Awesome. So what does this actually look like? Were you not recommending to uh, a large number of hosts because of the uh, resource or the, the like system resources being overloaded? Or yeah, so that's the thing is I haven't tested it with that large of a network before. So I wouldn't ever think, wouldn't want your ideas to fall over because you loaded my script. That's that's the big thing. Uh, but yeah, the, the resources is the issue. I mean, if you've got like 200 gigs of RAM, then go to town to it on an entire class. Uh, so there's that. Uh, so what does that give me? Does anybody have any questions? Besides what have you been doing here for a lot now? Is your script open source? Yeah, it is. So this is all on GitHub. Uh, are we good? Okay, cool. So, but so when you see the possible back and next piece, why don't you just see TCP dump and grab that that capture? So the intent for this was have it running at the same time, like as part of my security unit sensor. So I already have PCAP logging, and then over on the other side, I want long-term logs. So I already have PCAP thanks to everything that's running. So I just want to like do the alerting, and then later on I can pull PCAP from another tool. Does that make sense? How long do you keep PCAP? Uh, I can only keep PCAP for like a week or two. 
I don't have that much storage space. So I have like five turn. 